Right, this, uh, this next book is an absolute must for anyone who enjoys thrillers. I do. I love thrillers and crime stories, and I love this, and so do you. Fabulous read. Fabulous. <clears throat> it's called Your Next, and it's by a, a well-known American thriller writer, more, more well-known in America than he is here, called Greg Hurwitz. And it says at the top there, pure staple night suspense, mm. and that is precisely what it is. It's a thriller uh, which takes place in real time. About 72 but hours. It's the whole all. thing from soup to nuts, but 72 hours. And right. it's, it's, it's about a man who's grown up not knowing what his past was because he was abandoned by his father when he was four years old. He doesn't have any idea why, but he knew it had something to do with a, a very serious threat against the family. He was brought up in foster homes, so he never knows what happened to his family. And then he marries and he's happy and he has a child of his own, and exactly the same thing starts to happen to him. Mm. The, pursued by two hitmen, and it is absolutely terrifying. The writer of this, Greg Hurwitz, sadly couldn't be with us today because uh, he's in America and he couldn't get over. But we did manage to get a few questions over to him, and this is what he said. The inspiration for your next came to me as a single scene, the first scene of the book. A four-year-old boy is dropped off by his father at an unfamiliar playground and told to get out and go play. And his father is very agitated. He's nervous, sweating, and the boy notices a spot of blood on the sleeve of his dad's shirt. So the boy is hesitant and scared, but he has to obey his father. He gets out and goes to play with these other kids, none of whom he knows. And as morning passes to afternoon, it slowly dawns on him that he's been abandoned there. As a parent, I found the image of that child coming to grips with this terrible reality, it just wouldn't let go of me. And that boy becomes the hero of my story, Mike Wingate. He never learns what happened with his mother and father. He doesn't even know their full names. And so what happened becomes this terrible, shameful mystery that takes root at the heart of him. He grows up and manages to put together the life that was taken from him, a beautiful family that's all he ever wanted and longed for. But at a certain point, the past returns in the form of two terrifying men who begin to dismantle everything that he loves and has fought for. In some ways, I think this book is about the vulnerabilities that I feel as a parent and discovering the lengths that we all might go to to protect our families. When I start a book, I tend to have an idea of the shape of the story that I want to tell, but I don't want everything plotted out too meticulously. I always want to leave room for the story to grow and change. For instance, I don't always know what a character sounds like until they start talking on the page. And sometimes when they come alive, they're wittier or smarter than I first thought, and they'll start to take over more of the plot. Also, given that I write thrillers, pacing is essential. I want readers to be ripped along by the plot. And the speed of a read can't always be charted in advance. When it comes to action and tension, I have to feel my way through as I'm hammering at the keyboard. I suppose your next is a morality tale of sorts. I, I think I gravitate toward characters who strive for the best, who try and do right by people, but who also have flaws and shortcomings like we all do. And it can take any little moral misstep to open the door to unforeseen consequences. We've all made bad choices under pressure. And Mike Wingate makes one fateful decision to go along with a small cover up on a project. And that decision, indirectly, turns out to be precisely what allows these mysterious figures from his past to find him. Someone has been out there, waiting, looking for him since he was that little boy abandoned on the playground. And as his world starts to come apart, he has to live with the fact that this one bad choice made under pressure is what unleashed this avalanche upon him and his family. I think I've always used the books in some ways as an excuse for continuing education. I love the research process. It always gives me uh, an excuse to walk in and take a gander at all those dark corners and facets of life that interest me the most. And so in the course of researching my books, I've done a lot of very fun and some people would probably say stupid things to get more information from them. I've gone undercover into mind control cults. I've gone up in a stunt airplane. Uh, I've gone with Navy SEALs and snuck into a demolition range to blow up cars. And my aim is always to give the reader a front row seat so that they can feel what it is that I'm writing, they can sense it, to, to really bring that alive the best way that's possible. 
I think with your next, the most fun piece of research that I did for this was learning how to break into and hotwire cars. And so that's a good added little tool that I can put on my resume. You know, I think the books have changed as I've gotten older in the same way that a lot of my concerns in life have changed as I've gotten older. I'm married now and I have kids and a lot of where thrillers come from for me are the things that keep me up at night, the things that I worry about. And of course those evolve as one becomes a parent. And at the end of the day, given all the suspense and all the tension and all the action in your next, what it really is, it's the story of a family. It's a story of a father trying to keep and hold together the things that he values most in the world. So that was Greg Hurwitz uh, answering uh, some of the questions that Judy and I sent to him very well too, I thought. Um, your next is, quite simply, as Judy said at the top, a, a cracking thriller. It's very well written. The plot all works. You know with some thrillers you get to the end and you think, oh, please, please end right, please end properly. Well, this does. It's got, it's got exactly the right ending, middle and beginning. Uh, do enjoy reading it. Uh, it'll probably only take you about, um, I don't know, 12 hours of reading, if that. And when you've done it, uh, go to this website, whsmith.co.uk forward slash Richard and Judy, and do tell us what you made of it and share that with everybody else who comes to the website. So, uh, happy reading. <laughs>